Sarah. Thank you, Chair. Um, the US Space Force and uh, Space Command has a budget of $40 billion per annum. Uh, we're obviously a smaller country with a smaller budget, $6 billion core programme and $1.5 billion uplift over the next 10 years. So we will need to rely on our partners, mainly, namely the USA. So how do we keep earning a seat at the table? Dr. Presley. Um. Yeah, a very good point, and I, and I think the, uh, oh dear, the seat at the table has been earned oh over uh, a, a long number of years with our uh, close relationship, particularly with the US, who is our, our yes, singular most the important ally in, in space and in space relationships. I would suggest that sort of the seat at the table is built on a long uh, history of uh, our contribution in terms of uh, places like RF Filingdales and the radar there that contributes to the ballistic missile early warning system which is the primary role and also conducts a great deal of space surveillance on top of that we've had a lot of people on exchange posts with the combined space operations center uh, 18 space control center at vandenberg so that that linking of the two has been very extensive and has built that relationship so i think the, the seat at the table is there um, less my area of expertise, but I'm aware that there's very close relationships in the intelligence and security communities as well. And I think that's given us access, which has been a great boon to UK over the years. But perhaps if we want to look at more nationally assured sovereign capability, we need to look at where we can contribute that is, doesn't replicate that, that contribution we get from the US, but adds to it by filling some of the gaps in there looking at some perhaps niche capabilities we can actually fill. The space surveillance capabilities, for example, that the US offer is uh, world leading. Uh, we couldn't hope to match that at all. But equally, we do have a, quite a bit of expertise built up through uh, our experience at Filendales and the Space Operations Center down at High Wycombe, uh, with the commercial support from uh, companies such as Serco. So we have a great body of expertise there, and that number one priority, which the uh, UK Space Director has mentioned on a number of occasions, which is space domain awareness. Perhaps there is an area the UK could contribute by adding one or more sensors to that uh, space surveillance, perhaps located in, in areas that there are currently few sensors, uh, because the sensors depend on which part of the orbit you can see. So I think we do earn our seat at that table, particularly with the US. Um, but I think there are still niche areas where we can build on in space surveillance is one particular example where we could contribute to that already in, uh, very good capability. Looking perhaps closer to home and our European allies, I think because we have been so privileged in the access we've had to the US capability, we perhaps haven't developed our sovereign capabilities quite so much, whereas the European allies do have uh, small little contributions they make into NATO. So therefore, I think as we look at uh, our position, having that uh, UK sovereign capability is something we could look for. I've mentioned space surveillance as perhaps one, perhaps a broader look and a horizon scanning to the future to see where those other niches might be uh, should be something that uh, the UK could look at to add to the contribution we make to that seat at the space table. Thank you. <clears throat> Dr. Hilborn. Uh, no, entirely agreed. I think it's, it tends to be the, the main strap line is that alliance with the United States for that's true of the UK, it's true of Canada, Japan, you see that in all their space policies, that's particularly important. And so it is finding these niche areas where we can contribute. Um, where the U.S. might be slightly light on uh, certain specific capabilities or, or areas. So just as we said, Southern Hemisphere sensors for space situational awareness um, would also be extremely useful to the U.S. Um, particular constellations that might be able to do certain uh, things, such as the Canadian Sapphire satellite, which is space situational awareness from space. So there's, there's a, a lot of innovation in the UK. There's more space startups in the UK than any other nation after the United States, or possibly China. Um, and so there's, there's, a, there's a lot of pockets of expertise finding uh, innovative and actually quite cost-effective ways um, 
to identify some of these niches and bring cost-effective solutions to them. And so, yeah, our, our papers have focused particularly on space situational awareness or space domain awareness, as now it's called, um, which is able to contribute without, you know, a great outlay uh, to the to the broader picture uh, of space. Mm -hmm. So it's definitely identifying these niches um, where the U.S. might, where we might um, complement the U.S. And instead of just being a net benefactor, we're also contributing to the data set that, that we're all using. So, you know, space is obviously bottomless, as is the finance and money we can throw at it. But it, it's sort of my understanding that the government needs to consider the UK sovereign requirements and, and capacity, uh, as Dr. Presley said, uh, the UK prosperity agenda and our international partners. Um, and I think in the middle of this is that term they call space proposition, which you probably know more about than myself. So, how do we capitalise, really, on our allies and their capabilities, uh, particularly thinking about the five eyes? Dr. I Pussy. think, uh, I refer back to what I mentioned earlier, the, what the US defence strategy came out in, in June last year called for expanded information sharing relationships with, with capable allies and partners and to align on space policy. But be able to, uh, to achieve that, you okay, must first have some data to share and a policy to align. I think the national space strategy is going to be a part of that jigsaw. And I think having a UK sovereign capability allows us to make that contribution. Uh, regardless of how small it is, it is a contribution and it is a sovereign capability that gives us control of a national asset. Uh, Mark mentioned uh, perhaps a, a radar in the, in the southern hemisphere which would fill a a, a current gap in the global space surveillance coverage uh, uh, library, if you like. Um, and so I think that's an example of how we could achieve that and achieve it with relatively uh, small costs. Uh, it depends on the capability of the, of the uh, sensor and how it links into any operations center and how bit large that might be. But we're likely to be talking about the tens of millions rather than the hundreds or, or billions of, of pounds. So for a, a, a contribution that is within uh, the UK scope, I think it could still make a significant contribution, not only to the US, but to the global uh, space sustainability debate and the uh, space prosperity issue you talked about uh, more broadly. And so it is identifying that and, and other similar niches that we can contribute to. I don't think we have to look to do everything, uh, nor should we look to try and um, replicate what already exists. I think what we're looking for in space, which is very much a global enterprise, is to find those areas where we can make a contribution that then is valued more across the, uh, uh, the globe internationally. And then with a quid pro quo, gain access to some other uh, sensors that might be out there. Thank you. Dr. Hilgel. Yeah, I mean, I, we've seen a, a slight change in tone from the U.S. in the last few years where there is, um, I think, a call for allies to, to do more to, to help bring that sort of composite set of capabilities to space as we see challenges, for instance, of a, a rising space power in China. Um, so there is a desire from the U.S., for instance, to see more capabilities from a number of allies, um, and this is where the U.K. can look to capitalize. You know, as I, as I mentioned, there's a lot of capability here. Sorry, satellites is a brilliant example where we see the, the kind of standard design, what we call the satellite bus, is being used for a number of, of different uh, satellite systems. So this Canadian Sapphire satellite that I mentioned is uh, Sorry Satellite Design. So there's a lot of capability here that we can capitalize on. That's industrial, that's thinking about um, some of the other elements like uh, big data and analytics and, and elements like that. So there's, it's not just the hardware. Um, there's a number of elements that we can build in um, where there is a lot of experience um, and capability in the UK. Thank you.